morning, ladies and gentlemen. Good morning to you all. It is a great privilege and a great opportunity to be here this morning and preach the gospel to all of you, my friends. From the studios of the Evangelist Ministry, we spread the good news about Jesus Christ and His saving grace. Our mission is to lead people into a growing relationship with Jesus Christ. The topic of this morning is His coming glory. If we open the book of Romans, chapter 8, verse 14 and 18, the Bible reads this way. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. For you have not received the spirit of bondage against the fear, but you received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba. Abba, Father. The Spirit is so bear witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God, and join heirs with Christ, if so, be that we suffer with Him, that we might be also glorified together. For I reckon that the suffering of this present time are not worthy to compare with the glory which shall be revealed in us one day soon, my friends. My dear friends, the subject of this morning is the coming glory of Jesus Christ. In anticipation of the coming glory, let us meditate. The Bible said, The Spirit Himself bear witness with our spirit that we are children of God. Verse 16. From the moment that when we accept Jesus Christ as a Savior and Lord, we gain all the privilege and responsibilities of a child of the family of God. And one of the most notable privilege is to receive the guidance of the Holy Spirit. The Bible said, and because you are sons, God has sent forth the Spirit of His Son into your heart crying out, Abba, Abba, Father. Galatians 4, 6. We might not feel always that we are Christians and belong to God. Certain times in life we feel like that, that we, are, uh, that, that we not belong to God. But the Holy Spirit is our witness. The Spirit is so built with it to our spirit. His presence in us remember who we are and help us with His divine love. The Bible said, and if your children also hears, hears of God and co hears of Christ, if we suffer and if children, then hears. Hairs of God and join hairs with Christ. Verse 17. My dear friends, to identify ourselves with Jesus has price. A high price to pay. As nobody and many people not willing to pay. To identify ourselves with Jesus Christ has a price. To identify oneself as a Christian and have a price and many do not want to pay the price. Along with the great riches that this verse mentioned. But if we suffer together, 
Paul speaks of the sufferings that Christians will face. What kind of sufferings will they be? For the believers of the first century, there were social and economic consequences. Many, many of them faced persecution and deaths. But what are the problems we face in this century, in the present time? We must also pay a price for following Christ. Because in many places in the world today, a lot of Christians face pressures, persecu persecution, as severe as the first followers of Christ. What are the problems we face? In this country as a Christian, with all the comfort of this case, what do we really suffer in, in America? My friends, what are the problems we face in America as a Christian with all the comforts, all the luxury that we really practice? and experience every day. Or imitate time. Or limited time. Or work hours. Or social responsibilities. Or business. What people might think about us. This is the pressure. What are the pressure? Or social responsibilities. Our business. What people think about us. That's the great pressure. But we must learn that even in countries where Christianity is tolerated, we should not lower our guard. In America, we lower our guard, our guard already. America is not the same America of my dreams. This America is not the same America of the 60s or 70s. So my dear friends, but we must learn that even in countries where Christianity is tolerated, we should not lower our guard, much less forget our missions. Your mission, your mission today is his mission. His mission is our mission today. The Bible says, For I consider the suffering of this present time as not worthy to compare with the glory which shall be revealed in us one day. Paul never minimized suffering. After all, his own life was a disaster. As much as beating, prison, his shipwreck in the ocean, attempted to mourn it, and especially his life, has a chronic illness. What a mess. We might say in our words, what a mess in this man. But his fate was better than yours and I. His fate went beyond normal personally insisted with absolute confidence and conviction that his future reward in the kingdom of heaven will relieve his pain. Oh my God. His faith went beyond normal, personally insisted with absolute confidence and conviction that his future so let's think about his future reward in the kingdom of heaven would relieve his present sufferings. Wow. I'm very sure that many of you cannot believe that. But read the book of Romans, chapter 8. My dear friends, our life as a Christian should be like those athletes who are preparing for the World Cup. A lot of discipline involved. Work for eight hours or more. Simple because 
of the desire to win the gold medal in the Olympics game. In a similar way, our Christian life should be the same in, in this life. Possible, we will be having trial and tribulations. But at the end, it will be worth doing and trying. Paul, with so much conviction, he said, I consider this suffering of this present time. It's not worth it to compare. To compare with the glory which shall be revealed in us one day. In a similar way, our Christian life should be the same in this life. Possible we will have trials and tribulations, but at the end it will be worth doing and trying. Sometimes pain and trials make us lose the, the flavor of this life. And it makes us forget who is in control. By how fortunate we are, the Spirit itself bear witness to our spirit that we are children of God. But my dear friends, we can get into a conclusion. How fortunate we are to know that this present life is not all, all that we expect. It is not true, my friend. I'm so excited and so happy that this present life is not all that I expected. That's something beyond. Something beyond that we cannot explain. We are heirs of God and co heirs with Christ. The kingdom of heaven is our inheritance, my friend. What a wonderful promise. All learn and prefer to be in suffering with our Lord in his heart than to be without the Lord Jesus Christ in good health. Wow! I am speechless when I say that. We are heirs of God and co-heirs of Christ. The kingdom of heaven is our inheritance. And I'm shocked when Paul learned and preferred to be in suffering with our Lord in his heart, but to be without the Lord Jesus Christ in a good health. Or oh, in any pleasant circumstances. He preferred to be in best shape and best circumstances but to have Jesus in his heart. He said in 2 Corinthians chapter 12 verse 10 Therefore I take pleasure pleasure in the infirmities and in reproach in necessities and persecution and distress for Christ's sake. For when I'm weak then I'm um, I is strong. God bless you, my friends. God bless you for giving me the opportunity to be into your house this morning. God bless you and God bless.